Lesson 11 for December 7 through 13, Backslidden People, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Wednesday, December 11, Treading the Wine Presses on Sabbath. Question, read Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. What is the issue that Nehemiah addresses here? Nehemiah 13, beginning at verse 15. In those days I saw people in Judah treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and loading donkeys with wine, grapes, figs and all kinds of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I warned them about the day on which they were selling provisions. Men of Tyre dwelt there also, who brought in fish and all kinds of goods, and sold them on the Sabbath to the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. It is not easy to stand up for God when you are in the minority, because God said that the Sabbath was to be a holy day on which no one was to do any work, Nehemiah intended to make sure that this command was followed in Jerusalem. No doubt, he felt a moral obligation to take the position he did and then act upon it. The Sabbath was created as the pinnacle of creation week because it was a special day on which people were to be renewed and recreated by spending time with God in ways that they can't when engaged in other occupations or other worldly pursuits. It has been said that, more than Israel kept the Sabbath, the Sabbath kept Israel. The point is, that the Seventh-day Sabbath was and remains a powerful means of helping keep faith alive in those who, by God's grace, seek to observe it and enjoy the physical and spiritual benefits it offers us. Question. Read Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 17 to 22. What does Nehemiah do in order to stop the buying and selling on the Sabbath? Nehemiah 13, beginning at verse 17. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said to them, What evil thing is this that you do, by which you profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers do thus, and did not our God bring all this disaster on us and on this city? Yet you bring added wrath on Israel by profaning the Sabbath. So it was, at the gates of Jerusalem, as it began to be dark before the Sabbath, that I commanded the gates to be shut, and charged that they must not be opened till after the Sabbath. Then I posted some of my servants at the gates, so that no burdens would be brought in on the Sabbath day. Now the merchants and sellers of all kinds of wares lodged outside Jerusalem once or twice. Then I warned them and said to them, Why do you spend the night around the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time on, they came no more on the Sabbath, and I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves, and that they should go and guard the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O my God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of your mercy." Because Nehemiah is the governor of Judah, he sees his role as the enforcer of the rules. Because the rules in Judah were based on the law of God, he becomes a guardian of that law, including the Sabbath. Maybe, if the nobles of Judah had stood up to the corruption brought in by the high priest, Nehemiah wouldn't have found himself in this situation. However, the rulers and nobles perhaps already resented Nehemiah for making them give back to the poor earlier. Thus, they didn't seem to object to the changes Eliashib and Tobiah brought in either. Nehemiah rebukes the nobles first and then commands that the gates be shut and posts servants at the gates to guard them. When the marketplace simply moves from inside the city to the outside, he takes even more drastic measures and threatens to lay a hand on the merchants the next Sabbath. Nehemiah must have been a man of his word because the merchants got the point and stayed away from then on. This week's lesson has been read by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. It is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department and through the services of Christian Services for the Blind. A video of this podcast also occurs on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.